Under normal physiological conditions, plasma is constantly flowing through the glomerular capillaries. Because of this, the glomerular filtrate is constantly being formed, which begins as fluid, electrolytes, solutes, and metabolic waste products move from the glomerular capillaries across the glomerular filtration barrier into the Bowman space. The rate at which the glomerular filtrate is formed is determined by the net ultrafiltration pressure and the filtration coefficient. This lesson will focus on the net ultrafiltration pressure. Now the net ultrafiltration pressure is derived from the Starling's force equation, which states that the net ultrafiltration pressure is equal to the net hydrostatic pressure minus the net colloid osmotic pressure. In this case, the net hydrostatic pressure is equal to the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure minus the Bowman space hydrostatic pressure while the net colloid osmotic pressure is equal to the glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure minus the Bowman space colloid osmotic pressure. Now the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure promotes the formation of the glomerular filtrate. But as the filtrate enters the Bowman space, it creates a small hydrostatic pressure that opposes the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. This pressure is small because the fluid entering the Bowman space is constantly moving into the tubule. On the other hand, the glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure opposes the formation of the glomerular filtrate. Now, the Bowman space colloid osmotic pressure is normally zero because plasma proteins are not filtered, but if they were, the Bowman space colloid osmotic pressure would promote the formation of the glomerular filtrate. Let's now describe each one of these four forces in greater detail and how they behave along the length of the glomerular capillary, which is shown along the x-axis. The forces will be shown along the y-axis and expressed in millimeters of mercury. As we do this, we'll use this equation to calculate the net ultrafiltration pressure. Now the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure averages about 50 millimeters of mercury along the entire length of the glomerular capillary. The afferent and efferent arterioles help maintain this pressure by adjusting their resistances. Now, if the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure were left unopposed, the net ultrafiltration pressure, which is represented by this blue area, would equal the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure, in this case, 50 millimeters of mercury. However, as the filtrate enters the Bowman space, it creates a small but uniform hydrostatic pressure of about 10 millimeters of mercury. As we mentioned earlier, the hydrostatic pressure within the Bowman space opposes the glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure. Because of this, we subtract these two pressures, which yields a net ultrafiltration pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury. Now the glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure starts off around 25 millimeters of mercury near the afferent arterial and increases to about 40 millimeters of mercury near the efferent end. This yields an average pressure between 30 and 35 millimeters of mercury. The increase in the glomerular capillary colloid osmotic pressure occurs because as fluid is filtered, the plasma proteins become more concentrated along the length of the capillary. Finally, the Bowman space colloid osmotic pressure is normally zero because plasma proteins are not normally found within the Bowman space since they're not filtered. So, if we subtract the net hydrostatic pressure of 40 millimeters of mercury, from the net colloid osmotic pressure of 30 millimeters of mercury, we are left with a net ultrafiltration pressure of about 10 millimeters of mercury. Now it's important to note how this pressure is not uniform across the length of the glomerular capillary. Over the next few lessons, we'll discuss how changes in afferent and efferent arterial resistance affect glomerular filtration by affecting glomerular hydrostatic pressure as well as glomerular colloid osmotic pressure.